This is the tooth of the Carcharocles megalodon, or better known as the megalodon shark. These unfathomably large predatory giants swam in our oceans from about 52 million to 2 million years ago. Based off of the large size of this tooth, it's estimated that megalodon was up to 50 feet or 15 meters in length. Compare that to the relatively wimpy great white shark of today at about only 13 feet or 4 meters in length. And scientists think that it hunted whales with a bite that was far stronger than that of T-Rex. But like modern day sharks, Megalodon had a cartilaginous skeleton, meaning one made out of cartilage rather than mineralized osseous tissue, also known as bone. And because cartilage does not mineralize to the extent that bone does, a requisite of the fossilization process, it's very rarely found in the fossil record. So when searching for fossil sharks, all that typically remains are their bone-like teeth, which are actually just hardened plate-like scales. This leaves scientists to puzzle out what the rest of the creature would have looked like, or actually how big it was, with teeth as the only clue. All that remains of the helicoprion from 270 million years ago are its saw-like, whorled-up teeth. And because nothing quite like these teeth exist, either today or elsewhere in the fossil record, it's been a paleontological mystery for scientists. What sort of animal had these teeth? Where exactly did they fit on the animal? And what's their function? When this fossil world was first discovered, paleontologists thought it might be some kind of shelled cephalopod, kind of like a nautilus. But Russian geologist Alexander Petrovich Karpanitsky named the helicoprion in 1899. After identifying that its petrification the process in which organic material is converted into stone, more closely resembled that of a shark-like fish. And his best guess to its fit and function? He thought the helicoprion teeth whirled out from its nose, kind of like a sawtooth party horn. Paleontologists over the years have hypothesized and revised just where they think the helicoprion's toothy whirl was located on the body. Some conjectured that it could have been anywhere from the tail to the fin to an elongated lower jaw. But in an effort to better understand these creatures, scientists are using new technology in order to look into fossils like ours. Researchers at the Idaho Museum of Natural History were able to CT scan a helicoprion fossil and found traces of teeth as well as cartilage from the jaw and skull. Their findings? The toothy whorl completely filled the lower jaw and didn't uncoil quite like a party horn. Perhaps more surprisingly, the CT scan revealed that the helicoprion didn't have any upper teeth at all. As for function, just how did they use this toothy whorl to eat without teeth on their upper jaw? Well, that's the next question in this prehistoric mystery. The bigger mystery? If helicoprion is the only example of this bizarre feature, how did this toothy whorl evolve to begin with? It still has brains on it.